guys had that hot start, and then they kind of got back in the game before you guys, you know, took over again back in the, you know, late in the third quarter. I guess just what, what do you kind of make of that lapse, you know, toward halftime, I guess? Yeah, I mean, every team's going to make a run if we're not making shots. I felt like we got a few great ones uh, that went in and out or just didn't go our way. And the uh, majority of the offense tonight for the Lakers was in transition. Um, so we just wanted to make it difficult for them and just make them do things in the half court that could uh, set our defense and put us in position to be successful. A um, few offensive rebounds went their way. Uh, but again, we've been talking about it over this kind of stretch of, of just doing the little things. And once the other teams do the little things, come in, get offensive rebounds, they get extra shots, then they're going to make a run or two. And this is your 10th game without Kevin. You guys are four and six. You know, a few things go differently. Maybe you're 500, maybe a little bit better. Just what, what have you made of this stretch without Kevin? And do you think you guys have a formula now for kind of how to operate without him? Yeah, we just take it game to game. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not really paying attention to the wins or losses per se. Uh, the objective is still the same every day we prepare as us to win basketball games. But, um, you know, we look back at the lessons that we've learned, uh, whether we were successful in winning or uh, we failed that, that night um, by possessions. Uh, we just got to do the little things that, that make us look very, very good offensively and defensively. You know, when we're out of position or we're not aggressive enough, then uh, the game could go either way. So. Definitely those six losses I look at, and I'm like, man, okay, they could have gone either way if we would have done the little things. But um, that's a choice. So uh, hopefully going forward, we can put our best foot in front of ourselves and uh, just give ourselves a chance to win every single, ch uh, every single night. Kyrie, uh, Cam had 21. Patty had 21. Uh, nope. Dayron had 14 rebounds. Just what can you say about the work that the second unit puts in behind the scenes that would allow them to play the way they played tonight? Yeah, no, I, I just think our, our group in itself uh, – we've gotten past uh, kind of the phase of being uncomfortable with our roles and uh, just asking a bunch of questions night to night, um, what it's going to look like. Uh, so once we got past that phase, I, I felt like we were, we're playing some good, solid basketball, just accepting reality for what it is. K's not in the lineup. TJ's not in the lineup. Guys are in and out. So it's going to leave opportunity for guys that are working extremely hard. And um, it's, it's nothing but joy in my eyes when I see them get rewarded for the hard work that they put in. Um, it makes my job a lot easier. And uh, I want to continue to lead by example by putting the work too. So when they score 66 points off the bench, that means I don't have to have a fourth quarter where um, you know, I'm putting my head down or, or doing the things to keep us in the game. Uh, I love to see the stat line like this where everybody uh, plays extremely well and everybody gets a chance to see that ball go in the rim. And second, just from the outside looking in, it looks like Patrick Beverly is probably one of the more irritating players to go against. Just do you relish those matchups when a guy is trying to play tough on you? I, I wouldn't use the the you know the adjective irritable irritable or you know he's irritating I, I think some other guys would probably use that word but for me I, I think with, with Patrick I, I enjoy the competitive spirit that he brings out of me um, and he brings out of other people and um, you know if you can get by him and you can score on him and I feel like you can score on the majority of the people in the league uh, that's just the respect I have for him but when we're out there it's going to be back and forth it's going to look like he's doing a lot but um, you know from where we're from and growing up in the trenches and playing against guys like that, I mean, it's nothing new. Uh, I welcome the challenge, but I just kept telling him, like, the objective of the game is to win. So me going back and forth with you right now and trying to score over you every single time, like, it, that's not really where my energy is. I'm just trying to win the game, Pat. And, um, you know, a few times I missed shots, and he was like, that's off. I told you he's going to miss. And I was just looking at him like, the objective is to win, Patrick. I'm not really going to get into this, but um, it makes the, the game a lot more fun, I, I, I believe. There has been obviously a little bit of heavier load on you these last 10 games. Um, when there is a night like tonight, when you see that, I mean, can you tell right away when, when Cam or Patty has it going or both of them that, okay, I don't have to do as much as I did two nights ago or four nights ago, whatever, and, or is it, how, how does it work like that? Uh, just staying in the flow of the game. Um, you know, basketball is, is a game of possessions. It's 48 minutes that's clicking, uh, ticking down. Uh, so when you got guys that can have two minute spurts where they score six to ten points or four points or they give you a three pointer out of a timeout or they get you a charge or defensive stop, it matters for the overall uh, landscape of the game. So I care a lot when those guys are playing well. I mean, I care a lot regardless, but when they're playing extremely well, I just want to feed them confidence and game to game. I'm just telling them be aggressive, find your rhythm um, and, and just read me. Uh, I'm able to get you open shots if Patrick Beverly's playing me like this. Uh, so we talk about it, communicate and then. Um, and come out with a win on the other side, just playing the right way. 
it's been a little bit of a running joke on social media that Cam never smiles. Mm-hmm. It looks like he, he cracked one to you at one point. Can you just talk about what you've seen from him personality wise and as a player, just, you know, behind the scenes? <laughs> well, first he said that that question came off the cuff, like screw <laughs> excuse my language NBA, but it's uh I'm not trying to get fine, man. <laughs> uh, when he said that, I think that's a, a small doses of what you guys see that Cam actually actually says and is like. Um, but when he's not smiling on the bench, I mean, you know, I feel like internally he would like to be out there, and he's a young player that's really hungry to be on the court. So he's really focused, and I take that as that. I don't take it as anything less or more. Um, so I just wanted him to be locked in, and his opportunity knocked tonight, and he was ready. And that just comes with the work, um, not you know trying to perform or be liked by the fans or the media and stuff like that. I, you know, just like he was being serious with you guys, but not really. <laughs> so. Kyrie, you've always spoken about the responsibility you feel to put on a show for fans when you're out there. As one of the stars of the game, in the context of LeBron and AD sitting on the first line of a back-to-back, is there anything you feel like the league can do schedule-wise to allow the stars like you who people come out to watch to be out there more than what they are right now? Sure, man. To be honest with you, I've been on both sides of the conversation. Um, in terms of uh, trying to get as much rest for a long time journey, you know, you're going back to the finals or, you know, kind of just going through the the day to day and you just want to be ready for the big picture. And then on the other side, you know, guys going down and, and you feel called to play every single game where, um, you know, of course it's about the performance and the fans and you want to sh- show up, but you want to more or less show up for the organization, show up for your teammates and, and get as many wins as you can because these wins matter early. So, um, we're, we're de- definitely taking the necessary steps of having the conversations with the NBA about what it looks like for the quote-unquote star players missing games or the superstar players not necessarily being available. Um, it's a long season, man. It's a grinded-out season, A2 games. It's a lot on our bodies. Um, you know, I, I will not complain about it because I put my body in a great position every day, but um, it takes a lot of people a long time to figure out what their routine looks like at a very high level. So there's a figuring out process, basically what I'm saying from the NBA side and the MBPA side on how we can reconcile uh, some of these issues that the fans bring up or the media brings up or people bring up of why people aren't available. Uh, So I see it from both sides and I I have to sit in the middle and just say, uh, you know, we have things in, in the works right now that we talk about, but all in all, everybody's body is different. Everybody's will to play is different. Um, and everybody's desire to be out there is different. So I, I just think uh, those that are available to play will play, and those that are not, you know, you just got to respect their bodies and respect what they do. So uh, You obviously didn't get a chance to compete against LeBron tonight, but just from playing with him six, seven years ago, could you foresee him playing at this high of a level at age 38? And what has impressed you the most about what he's accomplished this year as he approaches the scoring record? Yes. Uh, to answer your first question, yes, I definitely saw this when we were playing together. Uh, his ability to prepare himself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, game to game, uh, day to day. Uh, I've been quoted on saying it's, it's hard to be LeBron James or any superstar in any entertainment, sport, uh, athletic or business industry because um, all eyes are on you. Uh, but he's handled it extremely well. We gave the keys to the whole entire business to an 18-year-old kid, and now he's 38 years old and he's still dominating. I don't think we should be surprised. I think we should congratulate him and celebrate him as much as possible. Um, continue to, um, you know, enjoy the shows that he put on because it's not going to be for too much longer, you know, whenever he decides to play. But I'm enjoying the show, and I wish we could have got a chance to play against one another. But, um, you know, who, who knows what could happen down the line. So appreciate you.